Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with a familiar face. You've seen him on uh, Insider Travel Report before, Bob Lapista, who's president of Sea Dream. Now, Bob, uh, is uh, Sea Dream was one of the, the few cruise lines to actually cruise this uh, summer, and he's, they have big plans to cruise uh, this fall in November, and we're going to talk to him about that and a whole lot of other great policies and programs they've put in place to support travel advisors, and you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. First of all, Bob, uh, how are you and where are you? <laughs> hi, James, and uh, hi to all of you out there. Um, I'm actually in Dallas, Texas. Um, I have two daughters who live here and uh, doing absolutely great. They blessed me with uh, two grandsons. Actually, one arrived yesterday. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, that's so, great. Uh, it's great time here in Dallas. Uh, you know, we all, during a pandemic like this, we have to look at the positives because it's so easy to look at the negatives. And, you know, I'm always a glass half full guy, optimistic, and I look forward to uh, this interview and also uh, the future of our industry because things are going to get far better very quickly. Well, well, well indeed, uh, we're, we're, we're putting this out on the day the CDC is expected to either um, ignore the, any extension of the no-sale order or, or not. We'll see what happens uh, uh, today, and we're all very hopeful that they will not extend it again. But you, you've already been sailing. Uh, sea Dream was really the first luxury cruise line to get back in the water, as I said, this summer. You were sailing out of Norway itineraries, and I know you and I both wanted to go on those, but, you know, they didn't want us Americans over there. Um, what, what were those itineraries, and, and how did those sailings work out for you? That's right, James. I, I feel so um, so proud of our owner, Otley Brinestad, who uh, – our boat yachts were sitting over there in Lisbon um, during the start of the pandemic. And Otley thought, and he said, what can I do? I don't want my crew just sitting there waiting for uh, whatever the end of this pandemic is. So we went to the government in Norway mm -hmm. and actually came up with the very unique idea of sailing voyages only in Norway with one little stop in Denmark um, for exclusively Scandinavian guests. Uh, except for Sweden, because they had a rather high uh, COVID count over there right. in Sweden, but Finns, Danes, as well as folks from uh, Norway. Um, in mid-June, we started 12-day voyages using Sea Dream 1. Right. Those voyages sold out so quickly, we quickly made the move and brought up Sea Dream 2. So we did a series of from mid-June all the way through they just completed, actually, uh, the end of September. We've been doing these uh, 12 and seven day voyages, basically of the fjords, either seven or 12 days, and have been incredibly successful. And I'm very proud of our crew, as well as um, um, our vice president of hotel operations, Sudesh, right. keeping 100% COVID free throughout the entire operation. Now, what uh, you were just using Sea Dream One on that on those cruises? Uh, what was going on with Sea Dream Two? <laughs> well, initially we started with Sea Dream One because we started with absolutely no bookings, and the bookings came in so quickly from travel advisors throughout Scandinavia. As a result of that, um, Otley made the decision to bring Sea Dream Two up as well. Okay. So we were very fortunate to operate both Sea Dream One and Sea Dream Two on these great uh, voyages throughout Norway. And about 50% of the guests were very loyal sea dreamers from uh, Scandinavia, where we have a lot of loyal guests. Right. But the other 50% were brand new, and they were in a situation where they couldn't leave Norway during the pandemic. Um, but they could, in fact, join one of our voyages. So the uh, travel advisors who uh, started booking us really had great success in earning super commissions as a result of uh, Sea Dream being basically the only product they had to sell other than hotel space uh, within Norway. Now, you had an extraordinary, uh, uh, that was a wonderful uh, thing you did this summer. I know other small ship cruise lines tried and some unfortunately um, had cases of COVID, whether they were false or not, and, uh, uh, and, and they couldn't proceed. 
uh, but you you did it, and now now you now you got something coming up. You got um, uh, you're going to start, I believe, with a transatlantic repositioning cruise of Sea Dream One from Norway to the Caribbean, and then uh, you're going to follow that up rough uh, with a series of sort of roughly seven day round trip sailings out of Barbados, I believe, mostly to ports in Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, as well as well as Grenada. T- talk a little bit about those itineraries and how they'll work. That's, uh, that's correct, James. We, on October 15th, are going to take Sea Dream 1 out of Oslo and do a 21-day transatlantic voyage that will stop in Rotterdam, uh, Portsmouth, um, Unchal, Kingston, St. Vincent. Uh, we'll do our famous beach party in Meru prior to arriving in Bridgetown on November 5th. Right. That's to position for a series of Really, 22 voyages, primarily of seven days, but around the holidays, we have a couple eight-day and, uh, and six-day voyages um, during New Year's and Christmas time. But um, we're selling that, uh, that transatlantic now. We've got a very loyal following in Europe as well as in the United Kingdom. And guests can join that voyage in either Oslo, in Rotterdam, or in Portsmouth in the UK. Uh, to do the transatlantic all the way into uh, Barbados. And then many of them will uh, continue on some of our uh, voyages in Barbados. Um, The actual voyages that we'll be doing, seven-day voyages in Barbados, and the reason we selected Barbados is when it comes to voyages in a pandemic or COVID environment, you need to have an incredibly close relationship with the government, as well as setting up the protocols with the countries involved where you're sailing to. We learned that in Norway, dealing with uh, both Denmark as well as Norway. Um, But these voyages will be exclusively Barbados, the Grenadines, Grenada, and then, of course, back to Barbados. But consistent with our It's Yachting Not Cruising um, history, we are visiting very unique ports. So we'll be doing our beach party on these voyages in Meru, We'll go to the Canone Island, uh, Tobago Key, Union Island, uh, Equi. Um, our guests will absolutely have a spectacular time, and we're really pleased to offer travel advisors now in North America the opportunity to sell these voyages, um, Bridgetown, Bridgetown, seven nights. And back-to-backs are possible. Uh, you'll have the same voyage uh, the following week, but um, these are incredible opportunities to see um, the Caribbean and experience a real, true yachting uh, experience. Now, now, uh, how have bookings been so far in these new itineraries? Um, I believe you even had a, a five hundred dollar off offer for new guests sailing on them. Uh, yeah, the voyages have just been loaded on the website and are now available, fully available to sail. We have a uh, booking promotion that's going on: five hundred dollars per stateroom off or new bookings that are received on any of these voyages in the weeks coming up. Yeah, so also you also have something that you put in for all, all across the board. Uh, you're calling it the ultimate booking assurance policy, which enables guests really to cancel up to the day of departure, uh, whether it's COVID-related and you give 100% cash refund or 120% future voyage credit. And if it's non-COVID-related, you still give, and they're not comfortable with traveling, uh, you can cancel up to the day of the sailing and still get 100% uh, future voyage credit. Tell us a little bit about that because it was a pretty amazing offer. That's correct, James. It's interesting. Kristen Dreesen, our vice president of sales, and I uh, put our heads together and said, you know, what would be a really good um, booking assurance program? We came up with what we considered it was an incredible program, and we presented it to um, Otley uh, for his consideration he actually came back to us and said, no, I want to go right up to day of departure, and this is what I want to offer. And that's the, it really is, for the travel industry, the cruise industry, the ultimate booking assurance. You don't have to buy insurance. You can just simply take this offer, make a booking, and if for a COVID-related reason you have to cancel right up to the day of departure, we will give, as you mentioned, uh, the 100% um, cash credit or will, or I mean cash refund, or we'll give the 120% credit for a future voyage if the guest chooses and prefers to move to another Mediterranean voyage 
for a voyage uh, the following year. Um, also, if for no COVID-related reason, the guest simply at time of voyage isn't comfortable in sailing, um, we'll give 100% future voyage credit to be used at the future. Um, there's nothing better in the industry than that, and um, we're really pleased to bring it to market. We believe travel advisors can use that exceptional offer to help convince their clients, even though everything may not be crystal clear and exactly what the future is going to bring, this gives you the assurance you can make the booking, you can make the deposit, and if uh, you have issues and you don't want to sail, you have that uh, those funds protected for future voyage opportunities. No, that's a wonderful offer. And then you also you also introduced something for travel advisors. I, I believe those who book uh, uh, one of these new voyages, uh, they, have, they can access a, a FAM cruise uh, if for anyone who books any of those cruises out of Barbados. And tell us a little bit about how this uh, FAM cruise offer works and, and the cost for advisors and their guests. Yeah, that, that's true, uh, James. We do have this offer that is out through October 9, and this is for um, new bookings that come in between now and October 9. If a travel advisor makes simply one booking on any of our Caribbean sailings in uh, Barbados round trip, mm. they can take advantage of a travel agent reduced rate and sail with themselves and a companion, either on the same voyage as their clients, or if they want to sail on one of the other voyages, they can do that as well. Um, that's put on all voyage, voyages except for the Christmas and the New Year's voyage. No, that's fantastic offer. It's a great offer and a good chance for them to experience uh, Sea Dream either again or if they've never experienced it before. Uh, now, uh, what's, what's going to happen? What's happening with Sea Dream 2 uh, during this time? Uh, will it continue uh, doing the Norway cruises? Will it move somewhere else? And would you even consider bringing it over to the Caribbean if, if these cruises in out of Barbados do very well? We are, um, time will tell. We have announced Sea Dream 1, and that is locked and, uh, and ready to, uh, to happen. We have very high optimism that Sea Dream 1 will sell incredibly well. It's limited inventory. All of our guests who were booked on our other voyages prior to the pandemic have had the opportunity to move over. So we don't have real significant new inventory to sell because so many loyal guests said, I'll do Barbados, that sounds great to me. And so they transferred over to that point. Um, assuming the bookings stay strong, which we are seeing right now today, and we expect uh, next week and the week after to be the same, um, Sea Dream 2 could come over from Norway and also start the operation in um, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Part of it is the U.S. and uh, British Virgin Islands haven't opened as quickly as Barbados and the Grenadines, and that's why we made the selection to go there first. But assuming things uh, continue in a positive light, we also know we do incredibly well out of um, San Juan, St. Thomas, and St. Martin in operating uh, in that region. So it's our hope that we're also able to offer these voyages in the Caribbean on Sea Dream 2. If not, then Sea Dream 2 will stay over in Norway, and she will start the voyages um, at the start of our Mediterranean season, which is already on the website and selling very well for Mediterranean 2021. Right. Now, um, so, so in 2021, uh, at what point would you get back to what your published itineraries are, if, if you actually will? Uh, uh, I mean, because you don't, you don't necessarily have to. You do, this Barbados thing was not on your published, but... Uh, now, at some point, uh, if, if all goes well, I would assume you'd have both ships over in the Caribbean, right? Yeah, yeah. Although we, we end our um, Caribbean season right at the beginning of April, and then we do our transatlantics over to the Mediterranean. So our Mediterranean season, which is up and available for both yachts on the website, that, uh, that starts in May and then goes throughout. And we've got some real exciting opportunities in the Mediterranean coming up where for the first time, doing a very, very nice voyage out of um, Athens, including Israel. We're going back to Istanbul uh, wow. in 2021. We've got a lot of Croatia. And wherever we are in the Mediterranean, we're still going where the uh, big ships aren't. We're looking at all those unique yachting experiences that our guests absolutely love. 
No, and I, I have taken your Mediterranean cruise and your Caribbean cruise, and they are amazing, amazing sailings. And uh, you know, we're we're 19 years in business now. We just celebrated our 19 year anniversary. We started right at 9/11, and we we weathered oh. that storm. Um, I'm proud of our entire team and how well we're weathering this pandemic storm. It hasn't been easy, and it hasn't been you know easy, obviously, for anyone in yeah. the travel and tourism industry. But I'm just uh, very pleased and optimistic about the future going forward uh, once we get this behind us. No, absolutely. Now, um, what are you doing in terms of implementing sort of new, the new health and safety protocols to your vessels, you know, to protect guests and crew from COVID-19? Well, um, our, our team led by um, Sudesh Kishore, our vice president of uh, operations, the hotel operations, have done just an incredible job. And basically, you need to look at your own protocols, but also the protocols of any country that you're visiting. Mm -hmm. um, for our Barbados-bound guests, we're requiring, uh, prior to their arrival in Barbados, and this also, if you go on to the Barbados website, you can see some of this as well, but um, you need a COVID um, PCR test done 48 to 72 hours prior to flying to Barbados. Mm -hmm. And you need that documented um, prior to your arrival. Right. Right now, we, we believe you can expect another test at the airport um, on arrival. Mm. Um, we are encouraging our guests to arrive for their Sea Dream voyages on the day of departure. However, it is looking very um, probable that guests will be able to arrive a day or two earlier and stay in designated hotels in Barbados Right. prior to embarking on their Sea Dream voyage. Um, for embarkation, because the processes we're doing in retesting guests prior to embarking, um, we're going with staggered embarkation times all the way from noon, which is earlier than our normal embarkation, all the way up to 6 p.m. Right. And for late arrivals in Barbados, we'll also be there and uh, able to embark guests later. Um, our doctor will greet all of our guests. They will run the Abbott ID Now machine um, COVID ID test. Um, we will be able to get the results within 15 minutes. This, uh, these um, uh, machines have already been purchased. And he will also take the temperature of all guests as mm -hmm. well as have them uh, fill out a health screening form prior to embarking on the vessel. Mm -hmm. uh, once you're on board, we have a thermal scanner now that will record temperature, and this will be used anytime you're leaving the yacht, um, as well as on a daily basis. It's not something that requires uh, you to put a thermometer in your mouth or anything like that. It's a very quick process, and it's simply long uh, for the safety of all guests as well as. Um, we're also requesting, of course, and we're all learning this in everything we do, that uh, maintaining social distancing simply makes common sense. Right. The amount of cleaning on board that is going on, and any of our past guests know that our crew is always cleaning all touch points on the yacht, but we have a new procedure for pre-sanitizing staterooms with a um, piece of equipment called UltraPure AP4. Okay is an advanced ultrasonic fogger used for high-level disinfection in hospitals and so forth. We have purchased those units and they'll be used on our yachts. Um, we also have uh, the use of UV lamps in addition to sanitize the staterooms on a daily basis. Um, and many, many hand sanitized dispensers throughout the entire yacht. Um, a couple other changes are taking place. We no longer we're not known for a uh, buffet, <laughs> on uh, but uh, no longer will you be able to select your uh, luncheon uh, items and so forth from any kind of a buffet. You will be able to select those and the waiter will be, um, based on your selections, bringing it to you. Um, so all kinds of attention to detail in ensuring that our guests and our crew are safe and we remain COVID free to the best of our ability. There's also things like um, when you enter the yacht, we have new um, pads that um, clean the shoes um, for guests arriving. So <laughs> we have not, we've turned over every stone. We're following yeah. um, government regulations. 
well as uh, regulations um, that uh, just our medical experts see as uh, appropriate to ensure that we remain uh, with our clean record from a COVID standpoint. The yeah. experience, yeah. onboard experience for the guests, once they're on board, we know they're in a very safe environment. They're basically in their home, if you will, um, and uh, because of all the testing we've done. So we want to do our best to ensure that the guests feel the onboard experience. Sure. It's sure. very, very similar to what they have come to love with CG Yacht Club. Well, if I recall, the 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 the, the waiters, the, the when you went to the buffet on Sea Dream One or Sea Dream Two, they wouldn't even let you carry your your plate to the the table. Uh, so uh, you know, and I said, no, it's okay, I'll take it, I'll take it. But no, 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 I couldn't do that. So it, it's not going to be that different. I tell you that. Much. Uh, that's uh, that's correct, James. And for for many of the travel advisors out there who've never sold Sea Dream, I I started Sea Dream with Otley some 19 years ago, and. I love what I do because of the incredible crew we have on Sea Dream 1 and Sea Dream 2. And I just have to ask you to trust me. If you send your very valuable clients on Sea Dream, more than likely they'll rebook future voyage on board during the voyage. And of course, when they do that, you get full commission credit for those future books as well. Our onboard booking numbers are just incredible and our repeat test factor is, you know, over 65% sure. on most of our voyages uh, throughout the year. No, it's it's really a great experience. And having done it a few times myself, I can fully endorse it. It's one of my favorite cruise experiences, that's for sure. Now, now as we talk today, and, and this is going to appear on September 30th, uh, which is the date that the U.S. Centers for Disease Control's no sale order uh, basically, it's for mid-sized and larger ships you know, departing from North American ports was uh, set to expire on the 30th, uh, and many believe the CDC will simply let it expire. Uh, but if it does not, if, they, if it extends, does that affect your plans at all for uh, Barbados and, and those cruises? Well, James, we're, we're very hopeful it is not extended, that it just is let to expire, because we really want the entire industry to come back and come back strong. We happen to be, given the fact that we're under, under 250 total on board, right. we fall under the requirements of that no sale order. You're so almost we're, under 100, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We're well under the 250, but uh, we normally have 100 guests on board with uh, close to equal number. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Not, it's, it's we, not- we, we truly want the entire industry to come back, and uh, we know it will. Um, and we know we provide as a as an industry an incredible experience, uh, and there's so many loyal cruisers out there who are looking forward to getting back to, in our case, yachting on Sea Dream. Well, I know we're all looking forward to get getting back at sea. Now, is there anything else you want to tell uh, our our travel advisors out there um, during this pandemic? And is there anything else you want to let them know about Sea Dream today? Well, my hope for all of you is that you also have weathered this storm. It hasn't been easy for any of us. I hope you and your uh, your families have uh, have remained uh, healthy, and if not, that your recovery has been great. And we look forward to welcoming your clients on Sea Dream. And again, we will take incredibly good care of them, and they were, will be in a healthy and safe environment uh, to return many times in the future on Sea Dream. But here's to your health, here's to our mutual success, and great times for you. Wonderful. Bob, thank you very much for taking the time, and uh, congratulations on your new grandchild. Uh, it's, it's great. In a way, you're back home, and you can enjoy that. Uh, uh, but but we do want to see you back and see one of these days, and you and I have to go on one of these uh, together soon. I know we, we hang out all over the world. Uh, we, we attended an Australian rules football game together, which was a lot of fun, uh, uh, and I've known you for 30 years now. You were my first press trip, still remember it, to Cozumel uh, long before Sea Dream, but uh, I always enjoyed being with you and, and getting together, and uh, all this great news from Sea Dream uh, is just the icing in the cake. So we're looking hey, forward James, to James, it would be our pleasure to welcome you on board one of these voyages. And, uh, you know, you're always welcome at Sea Dream, as you know very well. Great. Thank well, you thank, so much. Thank you, Bob. And uh, I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs> <laughs>